Hi guys, welcome back. It's a lovely day here in England. I'm in my studio with the windows wide open and the sunshine streaming down. But I thought I'd come in the studio today and show you how I do my organza technique. Now this technique has been with me for many years. I've been teaching this and going all over the world and around the places in England, teaching people how to layer up organza, machine embroider it, use some reverse applique to let some colours come through from the layering system and finally use my trusty soldering iron. So here I have a kit that you can get off my website and I'm just going to run you through how you go about doing the technique because there are rather a lot of techniques to go through before you get the finished result which looks like this. This is the rose one and I've also got the lovely clematis one that we're going to look at here. Today we're going to be looking at the Clematis kit. This is one of the kits that's been with me many, many years and sells really well. And when it's done, it looks like this, okay? But you can also do them in lots of other ways. And I love my flowers, so you'll see here I've got quite a few really great English flowers that really look lovely with the organza. Now, how do we go about doing it? I'm going to open this kit and show you what's inside it. So in the kit, we get a selection of organza fabrics that I have chosen because no matter what you do to them, you will get this kind of look. The colors may move around, but I have chosen the fabrics deliberately so that you can't go too wrong with this. And because it's a layering up system, um, the colors can change when they're overlapped. So what we get is we get a collection of organza fabrics and one of them in the kit has this little label on it that says overlay fabric, do not cut up. This makes a difference later on in the procedure. So I'm just going to pop that to one side a moment. And these ones, what I'm going to do with these is I'm just going to use the creases that are in the kit and I'm actually going to cut them up because I want to make a collection of small pieces of organza that I can move around in a layering system to give that effect of dyed fabric but it's, it isn't really dyed, it all comes from the fact that we've chopped up all these little bits of fabric and we're going to move them around and make a new fabric. So just bear with me whilst I do that. Right, so I've got my confetti of, of fabric, so they need to go to one side a moment. And what else is in the pack? You will find some beads which are for later on to just add a little bit of decoration to your flowers. And the most important thing is this water soluble. This is a heavy duty water soluble. And what we're going to do is we're going to use one piece which we're going to trace our design onto. So in the kit, we've got two pages of instructions, which you're not going to need because I'm going to tell you how to do it. We've got the drawing which we're going to trace onto the water soluble and then we have a process diagram which is a little bit like paint by numbers. The grey areas are the areas that we're going to do some reverse applique on and the black areas are where you're going to use your soldering iron later on. So let's go to this one. What you're going to do is you're going to pop your piece of, you're going to pop your design down there, pop your piece of water soluble over the top and then you're going to take a black permanent pen with a fine tip and you are going to trace on the design, taking your time. And if you notice, the whole design is connected to each other. So you need to really take your time doing this. And missed a bit there. If you um, find it easier, you can tape the corners with a little bit of masking tape and that will help you hold it in place while you do your tracing. Now I'm not going to trace all of this because it's going to take me a few minutes. So I've got one that I did earlier. If I put this behind it, you'll be able to see it. So it's a little bit smudged. Um, that happens when you've got your arm over something. So it's always a good idea to also write your name on here so that you know which way over to keep the design. It's very easy to, to turn it over and, and reverse the design. So once we've done that, we need our second piece of water soluble. Here it is. I'm going to pop that down there. 
you'll need your actual picture that you got with the kit and what you're going to do is you are going to make a new fabric so from all those fabrics that we cut up we are gradually going to pick them up and we're going to put them in the area that we can see they come in this picture using it as guidance and I'm just going to put one layer down first I think it goes to light there and they're slightly overlapped pop the lilac up the top here a bit more mauve in now that's my first layer we need this to be three layers deep otherwise it won't make a substantial fabric so I'm now going to go in for a second time and I'm going to overlay these pieces on top of the original one and as you put one over the top of another you get a very different colour begin to happen you get deeper shades of the colours I'm going to pop that one there now you can do this completely random it works every single time I promise you in fact it used to work so much better when I used to give it to the children to do and they would just go oh mum do we have to and they plonk it down um, without any fault for it and they were the best pieces of work that I ever stitched because they didn't care and I just did what they layered up and you can see how this is working it's getting thicker but I want some lighter colours in so pop now if you've got selvages on them don't use them you don't want the selvage edge in the middle of your work so if you do need to use them make sure you put them to an outside edge so that they don't interfere with the design and I'll put a bit more darker green down here and I actually need a bit more purple down in this corner so I'm just going to pop in some purple and I think I need a bit more purple up here and a bit more lilac across the middle and you can see that that's actually become quite thick now I'm just going to pop a bit more dark green down there and I think I'm there I've got at least three layers there now I'm ready for the fabric that had the overlay label on it take that off and what the overlay fabric does whoops is when you put it down over all the chunks and the pieces that you've cut up it mutes it now this is really good because later on you're going to need that um, so that when you take a layer off there's enough difference between the chopped up pieces of fabric and the overlay fabric so that you get lovely shades appearing lastly on goes my design I need to remember to, to slide my paper out because we don't want that as part of the layering system and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a needle and thread and I'm going to baste round the edge and I'm going to go from corner to corner now that will give me something that looks like this and this is a smaller version of what I've just done there so here you have it I've got my basting stitches from corner to corner all the way around the edge and all of those squares are layered up inside and my overlay fabric is over the top and it's all in between the water soluble because your sewing machine will not like stitching this so now it's in it's ready to go to the sewing machine we can put the sewing machine on and you're going to set your sewing machine up for free motion stitching and you can choose any colours you wish to stitch it with so it might be quite nice if you went for a really dark purple um, you could use a nice bottle green on there and you're going to take your time and you are going to stitch round the entire design so there's my chunks on the back again this is the right side and you can see that having the water soluble there it enables everything to stay flat the machine can cope with stitching it and you just need to spend, spend your time making sure that you stitch around all of the lines that you can see now if you miss some of the lines don't panic because we're going to wash this away next so if you do have a little bit of a you know a wobbly no one's going to know once we've done our stitching this then gets chucked into a a bowl of warm water you can add a little bit of soap to it um, it's cold water dissolvable but a little bit of warm water helps it to dissolve a bit quicker and this will all turn to glue 
all this shiny stuff that you can see will all turn to glue and you will wash it several times and that will wash it all out and what you get back let me turn this over so you can see it you get back something that looks like this can you see it's 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 there the design is there but it looks a little bit dull and a little bit boring so the next thing you do is you take a small set of embroidery scissors and in the instructions we're going to the gray areas now it will tell you which areas you need to start clipping back that top overlay fabric that we laid over all those chunks and in this case i've done this area here and can you see the green coming through and that's because we're made up of layers of fabric on the back and as we take a layer off the front we begin to get these lovely shadings come through and then lastly so that we can give it that lovely open lacy look you take a soldering iron there's the next piece coming in and the black areas are the areas that you are going to remove with your soldering iron and you want a small soldering iron like this you want a fine tip you want a piece of wire wool to keep all the end clean I mean this one's obviously not on at the moment but this will heat up and then you take your piece of work you pop it on a piece of glass you locate which area you're going to remove and on the glass when this is hot you push down and the the tip of the soldering iron is now hot and it will melt through and you slowly move it round that area and it will melt through seal the edge and you will be able to take that piece of fabric out and all of these round the edge will be perfectly smooth and it won't fray now that is the technique that I've shown you and once you've got that technique you can go on to use that technique and you can do all sorts of things with it I've got some lovely brooches here that I've made and those brooches can also go onto quilts as quilt toppers but you can also make them into see-through panels which are rather lovely and you can do the work that's behind me once you've got this technique you can use it to customize all manner of things I hope you enjoyed an insight into how I make my organza panels and the types of things that I do with it. Um, if you'd like to have a go at a brooch or a kit, pop over to my um, website and you'll find those kits available for you to buy there. But above all, remember to subscribe and like my YouTube channel and I'll be back in the future with some more interesting things for you to learn.